A few months ago, I sent out an email to our member leaders asking two questions. The first question was, what do you believe is the single greatest challenge facing the discipline of physiology over the next decade? And the second question was, what areas of physiological research currently underway do you believe will have the greatest impact on humanity during the next 10 to 20 years? The answers to these two questions could not have been more different. Many of the answers to the first question were closely related. People talked about the pervasive misconception that physiology is an old and outdated discipline and that the energy has shifted to subdisciplines. They spoke generally about the image problems we have with the public and greater scientific community. They said that students often think of physiology as just a class, and administrators sometimes mistakenly believe that physiology is only a teaching science rather than a vital area of scientific discovery. Now, the answers to the second question, however, were almost the mirror opposites of the first. Those who responded said that right now, physiologists are engaged in some of the most important and compelling biomedical research imaginable. Physiology is at the center of research that could alleviate human suffering in countless ways and unfold the mysteries of our understanding of living things. Our members' work is advancing treatments and cures for everything from cancer and heart disease to obesity and addiction. They're deepening our insights into the profound effects of climate change on living things. And they're at the leading edge of technologies and techniques like epigenetics, device therapy, and reparative and regenerative medicine, to name just a few. These approaches are revolutionizing the way we think about health and disease. So here is the conundrum. How can physiology be both obsolete and essential to answering virtually every question we have about our understanding of life and health and disease? The reality is that physiology today could not be more relevant. It could not be more critical. And it's our job as the largest organization in the world representing physiology and physiologists to bridge the gap between this incorrect public perception and the dynamic reality of what physiology is and what it's becoming. The science is evolving quickly, and our members deserve a professional society that is not merely keeping pace with these changes, but is proactively leading the way. Now, when I spoke at EB to our members um, just a few weeks ago, I wanted to tell them a little bit about me as their new executive director, but mostly what I wanted to talk about was where APS is headed and to preview some of the first steps that we're taking to get there. As many of you know, for the last 30 years, I've worked for associations and nonprofits, helping organizations grow and become more strategic and innovative in the way they serve their members. And while I'm not a scientist, in each of my last three positions, I led scientific societies. Through these experiences, I've come to see science and the scientific process of inquiry and discovery as profound engines for human advancement and good. I love that science is both rational and creative. Even more, I love that science is profoundly collaborative. When I was executive director of the American Ceramic Society, a man who was one of the giants in the material science field, once summed up his success, telling me that the best thing he had done in his career was to develop great relationships. Science, he said, is a social enterprise. And indeed it is. It takes place within the context of a community. Ideas are developed in collaboration and tested and evaluated by peers and colleagues. Every major discovery stands on the shoulders of smaller discoveries. 
inquiry builds on inquiry. And the research of one group of scientists becomes the building blocks for another. At its best, a scientific society like the American Physiological Society can serve as a tremendous catalyst for community and thus for the science itself. We have the ability to connect people and ideas, spotlighting and supporting high impact science that in turn inspires others and creates momentum toward future discovery. We can provide a home for top researchers and scientists and educators and a launching pad for students and trainees. And by equipping and growing and serving this community, APS and all of us can be part of one of the most consequential projects imaginable. To advance our understanding of disease and life and health in ways that significantly benefit humanity. None of this is new for APS. We've been doing these things in different ways for 132 years. And we've had tremendous success. But like the science itself, we must keep evolving and changing and taking risks or else we'll become irrelevant. In 2016, as part of our strategic planning research, members and non-members alike were asked to select adjectives that best described APS. At the top of the list were trustworthy, and well-respected, and reliable. That's the good news. At the bottom of the list were innovative, and dynamic, and empowering. And that needs to change. As that great philosopher Frank Zappa once said, without deviation from the norm, progress is not possible. We can't combat the pervasive myth that physiology is old and irrelevant. If APS itself looks dated and appears more focused on preserving yesterday than on shaping tomorrow. Of course, we must focus first and foremost on the science. But we also need to tell a new story about both the society and the discipline. We need to worry less about what people call themselves and focus more on what they actually do. We need to tell stories about our members' work that captivate the public's imagination, making sure that people understand that regardless of how it's labeled, that this is physiology. We need to find better ways to explain the importance of basic science, showing how often our most important discoveries occur because someone started with a compelling question and a passion for discovery, rather than a desire for a marketable product. We need to position physiology firmly at the center of translational medicine. And we need to proclaim the importance of physiology education, connecting the dots between outstanding physiology programs and bigger discoveries and better medical outcomes. Our members stand on the leading edge of science. They deserve an organization that consistently delivers excellence, that provides exceptional service, and that has a compelling vision for the future. Together, we need to ensure that this organization is focused laser-like on that future. And we need to start today. During the past eight months, it's been my great privilege to meet with members and leaders and staff, listening to their hopes and dreams about how we can move this remarkable organization forward to a new level of success and impact. Fortunately, we have a strong foundation on which to build. We have a truly remarkable history. APS members have included many transformational scientists. And we've published papers that have influenced the course of human inquiry and biomedical science. We have a wonderful staff team who are deeply committed to our members and the discipline. 
we have a strong journal program and other excellent programs. And most of all, we have an exceptional, dynamic, and inspiring member community. But we also have some very real challenges. If we want to continue to be a strong advocate for the discipline, we need to build a more strategic organization that is not only a careful steward of our resources, but also one that is capable of making critical strategic investments in our future. We need to be willing to take risks and assert bolder positions. We need to become a stronger advocate for physiology with the public and within the scientific and funding communities. We need to grow our membership by providing compelling value and a place where people feel like they can make a real difference. We need to enhance our influence internationally, providing global leadership from a place of service. And we need to do more to serve younger scientists, giving trainees and early career professionals greater support, a bigger voice, and clearer options for how they might navigate their careers. APS's journal program must be able to attract the very best papers. And our meetings must attract the leaders in the field to present their best work. And although we are a nonprofit society, we also need to operate more like a business. As you know, APS has healthy financial reserves. But our operating revenue each year gets a little tighter, largely because we depend almost entirely on a single source of revenue for all of our programs, namely our journals. Academic publishing is changing rapidly, and our dependence in this area leaves us vulnerable. So we must begin to diversify our revenue, and we are going to have to get creative. Now, clearly, there is a lot to do, and we need to get started. I'm reminded of a story that author Anne Lamott tells in her excellent book on writing. She writes, Thirty years ago, my older brother, who was ten years old at the time, was trying to get a report on birds written that it had three months to write, and which was due the next day. We were out at our family cabin in Bolinas, and he was at the kitchen table close to tears, surrounded by binder paper and pencils and unopened books on birds, immobilized by the hugeness of the task. Then my father sat down beside him, put his arm around my brother's shoulder, and said, bird by bird, buddy. Just take it bird by bird. And that's what we have to do. We have to take it bird by bird. Right now, we're finishing up our staff reorganization, creating a new senior team that I believe will move the organization forward in dramatic ways. We're in the process of finalizing our first ever chief science officer, who will serve as our principal science spokesperson and advocate, overseeing the science policy, scientific meetings, education, and member communities departments. And our new chief engagement and partnerships officer is already transforming a team that includes our membership, marketing, communications, and development departments. At the 2019 Experimental Biology meeting, we introduced the new American Physiological Society brand. And this month, we're launching our new website. But that's just the beginning. In July, we'll be introducing The Physiologist magazine, a magazine focused on our members and in the environments in which they work. We've already launched a new postdoctoral fellowship program. And we're moving forward with preparations to launch a new high-impact journal named Function. And beginning the process of reimagining both our annual meeting and our governance process. That's a whole heck of a lot of birds. And that's just this year. I want you to think about our new brand as not merely a new logo or a new look but as a way of thinking about who we are and what we do. It starts with this statement. 
The American Physiological Society is a global leader in expanding knowledge related to biological function. The Society champions the importance of physiology for achieving breakthroughs in health and disease in our understanding of life. We connect a multidisciplinary community of scientists and educators from around the world, driving collaboration and spotlighting scientific discoveries in physiology and related disciplines. This isn't meant to be marketing copy, but rather an aspiration and a benchmark and our promise. Phrases like global leader, champions, and connects, and around the world, and related disciplines will become guideposts for us as we build the future together. We want a brand that speaks to the dynamic process of scientific discovery, that puts the achievements of physiology and physiologists front and center, and that is bold and contemporary and focused on our members and their achievements. From now on, you'll see these themes increasingly in the way we talk about the society and the discipline. And you'll see it in the way we look. To embody this change, our logo has moved from this to this. Of course, there's no way, at least no good way, to represent the totality of physiology in a literal symbol. This new abstract mark is not only appealing and unique, it has an organic feel that suggests bodily function and organs, as well as the lifeblood of the circulatory system. As important, it represents the process of scientific discovery, how idea leads to idea and discovery to discovery. And while we fully expect that folks will still call us APS, we're using our full name here without the acronym because we want to bring the discipline to the forefront. This underscores one of our key goals for this rebranding effort. We will increasingly be putting the spotlight on our members, on their work, and on the ways in which they are changing the world. We need to tell a new story about the American Physiological Society and about physiology and the connections to other disciplines. A story about exploration and impact, about a global community of scientists who are creating the future and benefiting humanity. We have a lot to do, and I am honored to be part of this team and this community at this very exciting time. Today, APS and physiology are facing tremendous opportunities, along with some very real challenges. I strongly believe that the future success of this organization depends very largely on us in this room, on the APS staff team. There are misperceptions that must be corrected, and new energy that must be injected into the society. We need to make some very significant changes for us to be ready for the new world that we face. There's a new chapter for us to write. And both physiology and the American Physiological Society are just getting started. Let's get to work. Thank you.